good morning it is early in the morning and it is cold out it's got to be like minus 10 i think it is i preheated the car but as you can see a little bit of snowfall overnight it's cold let me tell you where we're going so we're at an undisclosed location here <laughs> It's, it's not actually an undisclosed. It's, we're, we're here in Burlington, Ontario, and we're going to go from here to Niagara Falls. And what we're going to do is we're going to have two cars. One car, both cars are exactly the same, um, Model 3 standard range pluses. And what we're going to do is we're going to have one car outfitted with the EV insulate, all the insulation and everything. And we're going to have another car that doesn't have anything at all. And what we're going to do is they're, they're both charged to the exact same level. They're both gonna be taking the same route at the same speed, same cabin temperature, everything. Everything is as identical as we can. And then we're gonna see uh, what the results are at the end. Going probably about 100 kilometers, which is about 60 miles one way, and then back. And there's another contraption here. Um, this guy here, Paul, uh, the guy on the right, I don't know if you saw him. He is, uh, he's uh, the owner and the creator of EV Insulate. Uh, I did a video with him probably about a year ago. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the video right above here somewhere. They can check that out. Okay, so this is Jeff's car. Jeff's car is the SR Plus. This is the car that's gonna have the EV insulate all underneath. And I'll show you a picture of what uh, Paul did and how he installed it and stuff like that. Uh, so this car should be, in theory, be the more efficient car of the two, but this is how we're gonna test it. comes in two halves so there's screw here screw here on each side so there are two sections and it will just pop out and separate mm -hmm. so when you store it and ship it it's in two sections and this is going to be the other test subject here number two the exact same as um jeff's but this one doesn't have the ev insulate kit installed who it is cold out there so we're all set we're going to go in about two minutes it's uh in case you haven't noticed i didn't tell you it's minus seven celsius out there feels like minus 12 with the wind chill but of course the wind chill is not going to affect us it is breezy out there so the wind we might get a headwind going there we're going to niagara falls which is about i know i said 100 kilometers it's actually about from here it's about 80 kilometers exactly away so that's what 50 miles and then we're gonna go there and back and then we're gonna uh, see what the difference is now both these cars they almost couldn't be any more identical the only thing that's different is the wheels uh jeff's got the uh arrow wheels on the stock arrow wheels with winter tires and his friend has uh steel wheels exact same 18 inch steel wheels though so they're a little bit lighter than the arrows but also the exact same winter tires on the exact same make and model and everything sr plus uh, their cabin temperature is going to be set at 22 degrees with the heated seats on on and a 22 at auto um and they'll be setting their cruise control or autopilot to the exact same speed and they'll be going together and, and you know what I have a long range. The, the test is really between the two SR pluses to see the difference, but I have a long range. Just for curiosity, I'll see what my consumption is and my efficiency is at the end of this too, just to compare it with theirs. And uh, we'll go from there. Should be a very interesting test. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, we're all at 90% exactly, 90% battery. And uh, my, of course, my 90% is going to be different than their 90%. So we are off. You know what? There's actually more than just myself Jeff and his neighbor, the ones that are actually doing the test. We have Paul here, obviously I showed you Paul. Paul Hindle from EV Insulate. And uh, we have Ken, we have Ken from teslamarket.ca. And then another one of Jeff's neighbors. So we've got like, what, six of us all together? Five uh, Model 3s and one Model S. So should be a nice little convoy. A nice little impromptu Tesla drive. We really didn't even plan this or, or, or you know, advertise this, but we've got like six Teslas just, just like that. We're going to get on the highway and uh, go and have some fun.
just getting off the highway now. Uh, pardon the messy windshield. <laughs> but it was a nice uh, nice drive, about 40 minutes or so. As you can see, there's the, all the line of cars. There's Jeff at the front in his white one, and then his two neighbors in the red and the blue one. And then we have Paul in the unicorn silver Model 3 right in front of me. We're all uh, going to this. Everybody is charging up. So it took me exactly, like I said, 73 kilometers. I thought it was 80, it was actually 73 kilometers. And I used exactly 20% of the battery pack. I started at 90%, just like these guys, and I ended off at 70. So be very curious to see what uh, everyone else's efficiency is. I'm gonna go check mine right now. So we're here at the Niagara Falls Supercharger, and then, like I said, 70%, uh, we started at 90, so we're down to 70. And uh, here's my efficiency. It took me 45 minutes. It was a 74.5 kilometer drive. I'm assuming it's gonna be the same for everyone else. And uh, here's my efficiency, 176 watt hours per kilometer. So that's it, a nice little, um, like I said, maybe 45 minute drive, 74 kilometers. Not a true, true efficiency test, but you get the idea and the message. You, you get what's really happening here. So let's uh, get back to where it's warm and we'll uh, crunch these numbers. So before we look at the numbers, folks, let's just mention that this was not a scientific test. We tried to make it as accurate and level as much as we could. Paul was actually even going to bring the scan my Tesla device and hook it up to both cars to check the uh, battery pack temps before and afterwards to make sure they were both similar before and after the uh, test. But unfortunately, the port was a different size for these SR Pluses compared to his car, so we couldn't plug it in to actually get that kind of reading. So looking at the numbers, folks, the departure was at 10 a.m. Both cars sat overnight around 80% charge, around minus eight, and they were both preconditioned and set up in the scheduled departure to leave around 9.30, and the cabin temperature was supposed to be around 22 degrees, which they both were. We left at 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, the temperature had rose a little bit. It was minus seven. Felt a lot colder with the wind, but it was minus seven. The total distance traveled to 150 kilometers round trip roughly between 100 to 120 kilometers an hour for both cars. They both used autopilot for the majority of the trip. There was very light traffic, as you could see in the video, so there wasn't many times where they had to come off autopilot to change lanes or stuff like that, so autopilot was used prominently throughout the whole entire trip. So after 74.9, basically 75 kilometers, we arrived at the Niagara Falls Supercharger, and here were the readings at the end of the day. So Jeff's car, which is the insulated car, had an average of 173 watt hours per kilometer. So we took our consumption average from the energy graph. Now, if you go into the energy graph, you can see the last 50 kilometers is one of the, the settings you can use, or 30 miles is what it is in the States. And we can see Jeff's car, which is the insulated car, used an average of 173 watt hours per kilometer. Whereas Jane's car, which is Jeff's neighbor, which is also the uninsulated car, just the average normal car with no insulation on it had an average of 183 kilowatts per kilometer by the way an important note we did not set the supercharger as a destination because we didn't want the preconditioning battery warming or the conditioning of the battery to kick in on our way there because we didn't know if one car would kick in before the other car so there was no preconditioning before we hit the supercharger. And when they got back home after the 150 kilometer hour trip, like I said, it was a round trip of 150 kilometers, both cars returned with about 30% charge left in the battery pack. On the way back, it was a very, very strong headwind. Uh, I encountered that too myself. So obviously with the headwind, you use a lot more energy than when we were going. Maybe that's why they were so efficient on the way there. So anyways, the insulated car, Jeff's car, averaged 208 watt hours per kilometer and the uninsulated car averaged 211 watt hours per kilometer. So there you have it folks, that's our little unscientific test that we did for EV insulin. And it goes to show you that insulating the battery pack actually does make a, a little bit of a difference. And uh, you can see with there with the numbers yourself. If you have any comments or any questions, just leave it down in the comment below. And um, thanks for watching. I'll leave a link in the description below for EV insulate. You can go check them out. And if you're interested, just get hold of Paul and he'll help you out. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.